Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I've been so quiet for the past nine months. Um, I wasn't able to record or edit any videos because work has been crazy busy. Plus, I've got other things happening in the background. So, with apologies um, for being so quiet. Um, but this video will be my first video in 2022. Uh, today is the 28th of February. Um, I just want to show you guys uh, my collections of uh, 1 to 18 scales um, model cars, mainly 1 to 18. I also collect uh, 1 to 64 model cars and some larger scales as well. So hopefully throughout this year uh, I will be able to share with you guys uh, some of the cars in my collections and I hope you guys will really enjoy it. And um, do feel free to add comment um, at the bottom if you do happen to have this similar or same car as me and if you want to share any knowledge or if you, you've got any questions about a, a specific model cars then feel free to drop your comment below and I'll do my best to uh, answer your question. So without further ado let's kick start with my first video in 2022. Um, in front of you is a Ferrari Monza SP1. As you can see, there's only uh, one seat or driver's seat. There's the two-seater version, which is called SP2. Um, this specific car is made by Virago. So it's an Italian or former Italian company made in Italy, uh, which later... I think it is in 2002, um, they got taken over by Mei Chong Group. Um, so they start manufacturing this car in China instead of Italy. But nevertheless, the quality of the cars are definitely getting better and better. Um, they are not perfect as yet. There's still a lot of room for improvement. Um, so throughout my next videos, I will try and talk uh, more details about the specific specific model cars um, as well as you know where I think um, Birago or Meichon Group will be able to improve uh, upon for the future models so in front of you um, is the Ferrari Monza as I said earlier it's a SP1 so I have put it on the spinning plate just to show you guys um, exactly what the cars look like um, in 360 degree because if you go online uh, you mainly will be able to see photos of the car um, unless you go onto YouTube channel then you, you might be able to find um, other YouTuber which have been recording uh, this similar car um, most likely the silver version with the yellow stripe um, across the front um, which is the Burago race and play model I believe this one in front of you is a Burago signature edition um, model so basically it is just a um, better model um, as you will um, they just have a better paint job. They have put a little bit more effort in to um, add the extra details on the model cars. And in terms of retail value, the signature model normally is a little bit more expensive than the standard version. It's not too much, which is still affordable. Um, but you do get what you pay for. And I strongly recommend if you could find the same model um, either on race and play or normal model or the signature edition I would strongly recommend you to get a signature edition instead uh, I guarantee you won't be disappointed because you do get you know the extra bit of details on the model car so before I start going into the details of this model um, I would like to show you the um, packaging um, the car has already been unboxed as you can see but I would still like to show you uh, the packaging that come with the car um, so let's go okay 
Okay, so in front of you is the original packaging of the Burago SP1 signature series. So it does come with this red box instead of the um, standard white or black, depends on the model, um, which has an opening window at the front and on the front side as well. So this one is completely closed up. Um, so if you do get it from a hobby store, you know, do ask them if you can take the model car out to check it before you bring it home. Or if it's internet uh, purchasing, then you have to heavily rely on the photos the seller put on um, on the website or on eBay. I actually bought these model cars through um, Amazon. Um, this is actually the second one I have received because the first one came, uh, there was a error or a fault on the, on the paintwork. So I have to return it and then I've requested them to resend another one. And although I purchased it through, um, Amazon, uh, the seller is actually Hamley's, um, toys in London on Regent Street, um, one of the biggest toy shop in UK. So, as you can see, there's not a lot of um, stuff happening um, on the box. It does say it's made by Birago. Um, it has some chrome effect um, on the Ferrari name. And then it tells you the signature series is 1 to 18 scale. On the front side, it said 18 plus age. Again, it has a shiny Birago as well as shiny photo of the Monza SP1 and then it's a Ferrari Monza SP1 at the bottom right and the Ferrari logo on the right hand side it said Ferrari signature series by Birago and then it tells you the color of the vehicle inside the box as you can see my one is red and I think this signature edition SP1 is only available in red as well um, the normal race and play version um, is silver with a yellow stripe um, across the front wheels and the rear um, duck behind the driver's seat that's also yellow as well. So on the other side again repeat of the, the information and at the back it, it tells you some information about the Monza SP1 or SP2. Do feel free to pause the video if you want to read the, the fine details. Um, but in summary, um, I just want to point out the SP1 or SP2 is inspired by the 750 Monza, 250 Testarossa and the 166 MM. So if you look up on the internet uh, of the photos for those three cars, you can see where the Monza SP1 or SP2 comes from. Um, in terms of the actual car, the the real car comes with a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12 engine. It has a seven speed Formula One dual clutch transmission gearbox. The car is rear wheel drive. Top speed is 186 miles per hour, zero to 62 miles per hour it takes 2.9 seconds and you probably need to do some um, conversion um, the 0 to 200 kilometer per hour time is 7.9 seconds and then at the bottom of the box on the right hand corner you will see it's a Ferrari official license product. It does have a um, unique zero number by Ferrari as well, which is pretty nice. And then there are some information on the left hand side, um, which said connector, sorry, collector model, not suitable for children under 14 years, contains small parts. Um, they reserve the right to improve or amend uh, specification and colors without notice. Actual product may vary from illustration and please keep the packaging for future reference and then at the end you can see Birago's trademark of Meichong group 
Okay, so now you guys have seen the uh, packaging. Um, actually, I would like to show you the inner packaging as well, just so you know what to expect when you receive the model cars. So it does come with... What else in there? That's it. It does come with a polystyrene box, which has the Virago printed logo at the top. And there's not much underneath that hole or indentation is for the bottom mount which I've already removed and basically is this it does have a Burago logo on it and I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the, the bottom mount because uh, Burago models always have this same bottom mount for all the other models um, because this is not a new new model that I have um, purchased I normally buy the model and then I keep it in a in a cabinet and I look at it every now and then. So I do have a silicon gel just to keep the moisture out. Um, also, if you know the most of the Burago or every uh, Burago model, it has um, a lot of metal parts because, because they are die cast model. It's instead of resin or composite um, body. So um, it's best to keep the moisture out. Um, one thing I've noticed with my older um, collections, model cars, um, is they do have tiny little bubbles, or you call it a uh, paint rash, which is a common um, issue with die cast cars. If you don't keep them um, kind of properly, you need you really need to take out the the moisture um, uh, from the model car. And or sometimes I know it depends on the manufacturer as well. So it doesn't matter, you know, how well you keep the model. It all depends on, you know, how they preserve the model before they apply the paint job as well as, you know, after the, the model car is complete, how do they keep them in factory? So uh, my recommendation is trying to try to keep your model cars in a cool, dry place, ideally away from the sun because you don't want the UV ready to take out or discolored the model cars or the parts on it so anyway inside the box there's a bit of um, tissue paper um, on top to kind of protect the, the paint job and uh, there's a bottom mount bracket which attach to the bottom of the car to fasten the car to the to the container and then there is a sticker here which tell you is a Virago model Ferrari Monza SP1. So let's move this box and packaging away and then we'll get into the fun stuff. Okay, so there you are again, the Monza SP1. I do really like the design of this car. It looks futuristic. It looks very smooth and aerodynamics. And it does have some pretty good details uh, compared to the um, kind of older style Birago model, which was made um, in Italy. Um, but then again, you know, technology do move forward. So, I, you know, I'm sure a lot of collectors would expect uh, to see more and more uh, details on the model cars by Birago. Um, so before I picked up the, the model to show you guys the details. I just want to point out, um, as I know some of you guys will probably ask um, on the comments session is, where did I get this spinning bottom or spinning plate from? So the actual spinning mechanism, I bought it through um, Amazon. You can easily find them. Uh, they do come with different color, different size, how much weight um, you can put on it. Um, this specifically uh, model of the spinning plate, um, I believe they said it could take up to 20 kilos. It all depends on what you want to put on top of the spinning mechanism to, to make it rotate, to record videos. Um, there are some other ones which could take up to 5 kilos or 10 kilos only, but 
yeah, I would recommend you to get something heavier because you never know, you know, you might start to collect bigger models or other items that you want to showcase then, you know, if you put the heavy um, items on the spinning mechanism and if the motor inside um, is not strong enough, then it's unlikely to, to spin freely. Um, so on top of the spinning mechanism, um, I also purchased this round mirrored and this is also through Amazon. I'm sure you will be able to find it. Just type in uh, display um, mirror round and then the diameter is I think it's about 25 centimeters um, which is which fits most of their 1 to 18 scales car. So um, I hope you guys will be able to find it online. Um, if not then do comment in the comment section below and then uh, I'll try and find a link and uh, and I'll post it again. Right, so let's get on to the car. Um, there are a few things that um, I would recommend you guys to to get uh, if you want to, you know, start getting into uh, collecting model cars, regardless what the scale of the model cars. Uh, most commonly, uh, one to eighteen scales, uh, which is what I preferred because, you know, the car is in a good size. It does allow to. Uh, capture a lot of information and details of the cars. There's a lot of uh, moving parts. Uh, some of the smaller scaled uh, model cars, they may have similar um, details um, on the vehicles, but you know you won't be able to open um, the the hood, um, the driver doors, you know, have the front steering, etc. So my personal preference is the one to eighteen scales. Um, I as I said earlier, I also collect 1 to 64 scales and 1 to 12, 1 to 10 scales model cars as well. So the few items that you probably um, want to consider of getting is um, you want to get yourself some cotton gloves. You know, when you handle the, the model cars, you don't want to leave your fingerprints on the shiny bodywork, and especially with the clear glass or plastic or plastic glass um, model, you definitely don't want to put fingerprint on them because they are fairly hard to um, to remove. I like to keep my model cars pristine and shiny and clean. So when I handle my model cars, I always put on um, cotton gloves or the synthetic um, plastic glove that are surgical gloves. Um, but I don't find them that good um, in terms of the plastic one because you know, your hand cannot breathe if you are planning to have the gloves on for, you know, over 10, 20 minutes, then your hand will start to get sweaty. So yeah, strongly recommend you get yourself a pair or a couple of pairs of cotton gloves um, for handling the cars. And then another thing that is worth getting, or you probably will um, get it, uh, depends on which manufacturer of model cars, you need to get one of these opening tools. These ones come with one of my model cars previously. Uh, if you get like a um, Solido or uh, what do you call it, Auto Art and Kyosho models, they all come with this um, panels opening tools, which is pretty basic, but you know it does help you to um, open the, the the hood, the trunk, the doors, especially the ones that have the the full mirror. Um, installation so you really need something pointy and sharp to to help you get access to those panels uh, alternatively alternatively you can always use um, a wooden toothpick which is just as good and then on top of that you know in terms of maintenance you you, you probably want to get some sort of uh, specific um, model cars polish I know some um, collectors they use real car polish as well and the detailers which is fine um, but if you're not that specific uh, in terms of you know the maintenance of the of your collection of the model cars then you could always use you know like um, furniture polish it's just as good um, it's just that when you try to polish the model car you need to be aware of the water transfer uh, decals and some of the photo edge um, stickers or 
graphics they they put on the cart you know you might accidentally remove them so you know do pay extra attention when you're cleaning the vehicles or, or the model cars um, and try not to damage them right so let me just put my cotton gloves on and then i will sh start showing you the information of the model car okay here we go so let me just remove the model cars from the spinning top. I just want to show you guys the spinning mechanism. It's basically, it's just that black base and I just used uh, sanitape tape to tape the mirror into position so that it doesn't shift when I handle the model cars. Um, this is a USB power um, spinning top or spinning mechanism. Um, there are three buttons, so you can press the button to start and then you click again, it will spin uh, different speeds. I think there are three different speeds um, that you could select. Um, the RL um, buttons are for, you know, let you choose whether you want the model to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. ASA is just an auto turning um, preset, so you turn left for a few seconds and then turn right again for a few seconds and then turn right again for a few seconds and that is it it's pretty basic but it's you know if you want to display your model cars in the display cabinet you, you do want to consider getting one of these it does look pretty cool so let me just put this away and then we'll start talking about the monster sp1 right okay so let's start with the car so at the front you can see this really nice trigger lorry that's run from the nose tip of the car all the way to the back it has a nice ferrari logo which i believe is printed on instead of water transfer which is very details very nice there's no complaint there uh, the front grille is mold, molded plastic texture vent, same as the, the bottom two vents there. So they are not perforated, they just texture. But from a distance, you can't really tell. So I think Birago have done a pretty nice job. Um, you, I wouldn't expect Birago to put in um, photo edge mesh for this par price range model. You never know, maybe in the future, um, Birago might consider doing that uh, if the buyer um, requests having that and don't mind paying extra for it. So I'm sure they're willing to do that. And then the front splitter or deflector uh, is carbon fiber textured. Birago have done a pretty good job on this model car with the carbon fiber texture details. And if you run your finger on it, you can hear, you know, it is not smooth. It has the, the texture on it, um, which is okay. I mean, compared to the higher end model, they probably used um, carbon fiber sticker uh, with a lacquer on top. But then, you know, if you do accidentally scraped or bumped the model onto something else then you might damage the carbon fiber stickers whereas this textured carbon molding you don't have to worry about that moving on to the headlights which is pretty decent you have the drl at the front the silver striped i'm actually in the middle of uh, fixing the headlight details so you might notice that the headlights is slightly different to your version. Um, the standard one comes with a silver stripe like that. And then the rest of the, the kind of triangular shape is black. But I painted it all silver because I want to put the details, fine black lines, um, kind of vertically to the to the front of the vehicle. Uh, if you Google online, you will see exactly what I mean. So I want to do that details on, on this um, headlights of the Monza. And then I also painted 
the the joint or the front tip of the headlight so on your one you probably see the red um kind of continued from the main bonnet all the way to the side um i have painted mine black just to show the separation um you know for the for the headlight um, area so uh when i have time then i'll try and fix that On the side profile, it does have a slightly larger scaled um, side wheel. Oops, sorry. It does have a Ferrari logo in the center. It has really good details of the locking nuts, there's five of them. And I think Birago have done a really good job on the wheel the actual alloy wheel detailing. Um, one thing to short from it is the um, air valve. So um, that's one thing I wish Birago have included that from the molding, but it's okay. I mean, if you if you have this car on display, you probably won't even notice it. From, you know, you're standing from like a meter away. The tire itself is pretty nice. It has the, the tread marking, which is pretty decent. There's no tire wall marking on this specific model. Um, unlike the uh, Birago Lamborghini Sian and some other model, you do find um, kind of tire wall markings on it. Um, I think on my La Ferrari or Ferrari FXXK. It does have the tire wall marking uh, because that one is also a signature edition model, which I will show you um, in the future. So, looking through the alloy wheels, you will see a yellow calipers or caliper, sorry, and the brake disc or brake rotor and the Brick rotor does have pretty good details on it and it has a nice metallic finish um, comparing to the standard uh, race and play silver version and I'm pretty sure the signature model has got a slightly nicer finish of the uh, brick disc rotor. Birago have done a pretty decent job um, at least to include the brake rotor and the brake calipers. Um, one thing that I wish Birago or moving forward they will keep doing is to bring the rotor and the brake calipers um, closer to the to the back of the alloy wheels rather than having it so far down into the the axle. Um, I've got another model by Birago which is a 488 GTB, the 70th anniversary edition, and that car have done really nicely because Birago have made the brake rotor and the calipers for both front and rear wheels like really close to the back of the other wheels. So that looks, you know, more realistic and it looks really nice. Also, to mention the, the wheels, they have individual suspension which is pretty nice, both front and back as well. The rear wheel is just as nice and just as detailed as the front wheels. The only thing that I want to point out is the rear brake calipers is not as accurate compared to a BBR model because if you look on the, the real car photo, um, the rear brake calipers is a lot larger than that. It should be similar shape to the front brake calipers. Um, similar to the front brake calipers, it is painted yellow and then there are some red writing underneath. Uh, if you use like a magnifying glass or you really zoom in with your mobile phone, you will see it's actually say it's ceramic. Um, it's actually, sorry, it said Birago 
carbon ceramic. That's what he said uh, on the red writing. And you, you could see the same details on the front wheel as well. And then on the side, you can see more carbon textured air vent, side air vent. And then there's carbon textured um, side skirt as well, which is pretty nice. It does have a really nice Ferrari shield on the side. Side mirror is pretty decent, it's acceptable. It does have a really reflective um, mirror stickers on it. The only downside is the, the molding of the mirror, which I wish Birago have done a better job on this, but it's still acceptable and it kind of blend in to, to the car um, from a distance. So can't complain too much there. Um, you probably notice the, the driver door. The shut line is pretty good on this specific model. Unlike the older generation of Birago model, they normally have quite a large panel gap. So this one is done pretty nicely. But then again, this is a 2020 um, model by Birago. So, you know, I would expect there's always improvement on their model cars. Moving to the back. So you see a nice photo edge prancing horse logo as well as a Ferrari logo on the trekker lorry. So those two items are made out of Photo Edge, which is really nice. You do get a semi-transparent um, brake line, which is very nice. There is a indicator or some sort that's been painted silver underneath the Prancing Horse logo. And then the lower diffuser or the lower part of the um, rear bumper is all carbon textured. Uh, they're painted two um, kind of fog lamps. They're not separate parts, just painted. And then you have the Ferrari Monza SP1 number plate which is, I believe it is a separate part. So that's quite nice. And then you have the quad exhaust. So twin pipe on each side, which is painted silver on the tips. And then the inside is painted black, which is quite nice. And it does give you some depth of the exhaust. So on the right hand side profile is pretty much the same as the left hand side so I'm not going to go through again. Now going to the top, you can see the, the front wheel arches is slightly raised and then running along the midpoint of the body you have the cockpit I'm not quite sure what Virago is trying to um, replicate here but this clear glass or plastic is supposed to be carbon fiber maybe they have missed that one out it would be nice if they have done kind of like a carbon texture molding instead of a clear plastic bit and then the rest of the the other two parts they are tinted plastic so that's quite nice and then into the cockpit so you have a brown color kind of racing seat uh, mine has got a s very small um miss paint there i'm not sure what's happening there but that's okay. I probably will try and find a uh, Prancing Horse logo to put it back there to try and cover it because the real car does have the Prancing Horse logo. And then you have two plastic um, seat belt with the Ferrari logos on it. And then it's a four point harnesses. 
I have painted the actual uh, kind of buckled to silver so if you get the standard signature model they're all black I just highlight those silver bits now if you lift up the door which open up like a butterfly door so it's not vertically up like a Lamborghini so this is a Ferrari butterfly door the door seal does have carbon texture again and they also painted a Ferrari logo there you go another view of the racing seat again and then behind the seat and around the cockpit it's all carbon texture so that's pretty nice the flooring you can see they have simulated the diamond plate and it's painted silver I believe the a standard model is just black or a gray color and then obviously you have the the racing drilled pedal accelerator the brake and another uh, area for you to rest your left foot so pretty good details in there you can see on the side panel or the control panel you can see all the um, indicators and the knobs are all there and then the steering wheel details is fairly good it's all carbon textured again with the ferrari logo in the middle and then the other color highlighting um, the different mode on the car and the start stop buttons is also there highlighted in red um, this the air vent is also highlighted in silver similarly for the pedal shift as well as painted silver and then in terms of the dash you can see there's a yellow ref counter or ref meter so that is a deco and same as the left and right screen, they just um, kind of water transfer decaled in blue. So on the door panel, you can see it's carbon fiber texture again with silver highlight and also brown color for the armrest matching the driver seat same as on, on the door seal that's also painted bra uh, brown sorry and then there is a small black handle for the driver to pull the door down okay so let's show you guys the rear trunk area one thing to um, bear in mind of is because Birago have made the the panels so tight together so when you open the the front or in this case mainly the rear trunk cover the panel is pretty close to the main body panel so if you just lift it carelessly you might scrape off the trigger lorry coloring or the main body color as well uh, that's one of the reasons why I've returned the previous um, first received model uh, from Hamleys or Amazon is because I saw there's some paint chipped around this area already. So the best thing to do is you hold your car with one hand and then try and push the, the trunk lid downwards while you open the the panel door carefully so that will prevent it from rubbing the the corner of the paintwork so inside the trunk again there's carbon texture all around and then there's a storage compartment there which is pretty plain it has a matte finish but it's not carpeted um, the hinge is okay it's 
because it's a die cast model so the trunk lid is quite heavy and you know if you kind of leave it open it will come back down eventually and uh, I wish Virago have installed a strut to support it similar to the older model like the uh, Ferrari F40 but I don't know if the real car has that probably not and that's why they have missed that out and then the hinge mechanism there's two hinges or two dog legs and they are the average size and it's one of the things that I wish Virago and other model maker like Maisto um, to improve on is try to make the hinges smaller and instead of two massive hinges there they could make it smaller one on this side and one on that side which is kind of out of the way um, I believe Virago have done the smaller hinges on the Bugatti Chiron at the front um, trunk cover which they have done it quite nicely with the small hinges and then especially when they painted the hinges in black that is a plus because you know imagine if they left it in red it's kind of like in your face a bit when you when you have the trunk opened when whereas it's black it's more subtle um, Birago on the signature edition model they have also painted the interior of the rear trunk cover black as well um, which the standard race and play silver version I think that just left it as a silver color so it's that's one extra features you get when you get the signature model now closing the the boot lid again hold up your car vertically and then try and push the lid downwards so that the you know when these two panels come into contact they don't rot with each other so you slightly press it down and then shut it there you go now moving on to the engine bay it is it has a clicking mechanism so you just lift it on both sides probably easier to do it one side at a time like that so again no surprise there the engine bay they have again put in the carbon texture which is quite nice and then the engine bay is fairly detailed it's not as good as some of the Birago modeled which you know which go really far down into the engine bay or to the, to the chassis this kind of stopped there where you can see it so um, you know it won't be a bad thing if Virago kind of spent a bit more time and effort to recreate the engine bay just to give a bit more details and maybe put some silver or chrome bits in there instead of just left it at mainly carbon texture with a bit of red and silver paint under the front hood again signature edition Birago has painted it black as well as the, the hinges that's also been painted black so it's less distracting and you know having them left in red color you also notice there's two plastic strut here let me try and point it out so it is this and there's another one on the left side so when you lift up the bonnet the strut help to support the the engine lid or the front lid to prevent it from falling down so there's a clicking mechanism there so that's pretty nice so well done to Barago for including that so that you could 
leave the front hood cover open without worrying that it's going to fall down. So, good point. Um, unlike the, what's the other model that has similar um, front opening mechanism? I think it's the Dodge Viper RT10 that also have a very heavy front um, cover which falls down quite often. So just to show you the clicking mechanism for the front hood. Uh, let me just try and work that out. Right, so the clicking mechanism is pretty much that piece of plastic, same as on this side. It will click into that session to fasten the, the hood when it's closed. And it's just clicked in like that. Uh, and another thing to uh, kind of remind you guys of, you know, if you want to keep your model car in pristine condition, when you open and shut the, the bonnet or the engine bay or the door, try to open them gently and shut them gently as well, because any impact um, between the, the paint and the, the paint, you know, it's very likely you're going to rub the paint off and then you will see paint chipping. So um, always try and open and close any panels like gently and shut them gently as well. Uh, moving on to the bottom side of the model car. There's not a lot of um, details. It's pretty flat with a semi-matte finish. And you will see the Burago logo, Ferrari Monza SP1. The two holes are for fastening their model car onto the, um, the base plate. And then, let me bring it closer. It was, you will see produced under license of Ferrari SPA 1 to 18 scale and because this is a later version of the Burago model so it, they're all made in China instead of Italy and then there's another serial number right there which is 12115 whatever that means and just to show you the, the tire tires pattern pretty cool so the front wheel is not as chunky as the rear wheels and then you get the the rear diffuser well that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed my return video in 2022 of this Ferrari Monza SP1. Um, if I have missed out anything, then feel free to uh, point out in the comment session, and then I will bear in mind to include um, the information in my next video. Uh, but I think I have pretty much covered every single detail um, of the model cars. Um, maybe there's two minor things that worth mentioning maybe three points so one of them is there's a small indentation on the air scope and there's no monster sp1 um, decals on the air hood um, compared to the silver one so the silver body with the yellow hood you will see there's uh, ferrari monster sp1 uh, stickers on this there's also two kind of pinholes um, indicator there but those two are painted on in black and then the last thing to mention is um, on the front grille you also see the three dots which are the front parking sensors and i don't see them on the rear surprisingly and as i said earlier the car does have front and back suspension there's more travel at the front 
and only a small bit at the rear so there you go guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed so i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching bye